Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back on the path to the Charles Martel. Now, we are on the tier 5 Laga, aka the Laga Lysenier or Laga Lysenier, whatever. Good god, a sirens, we get it. I know you guys had to hear that. That was loud as hell. Uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. But uh, we are going to check out our commander. We're running Andre Lemonier with uh, Isoroko Yamamoto, Nikolai Von Essen. Uh, beyond range, igniter, punch through, fixated, fully packed. We have the aiming systems mod 1 and steering gears mod 1, or mod 2 on this. Um, for loadout, we have our sonar. We're running the alpha test flag, which a lot of people keep asking if it doesn't. It literally is nothing. It's purely cosmetic. Uh, camo, we're running the revolutionary camo. So there's that. Okay. S uh, for stats, 27,300 hit points with a 10% torpedo damage reduction. Uh, you have 152mm uh, 55 caliber MLE 1930s. You get nine of those in a 3x3 configuration. Uh, they reach out to 16.4 kilometers. They reload 9 seconds. They have a 180 degree turn time of 15 seconds. Firing HE, you do a maximum damage of 2200 with a 14.5% chance to set fires. Firing AP, you got a maximum shell damage of 3564. Secondaries, you still have 90 millimeter 50 caliber MLE 1930s, but you have 8 of them. Reaching out to 4.7 kilometers, reloading in 4 seconds. Firing HE with a maximum damage of 1300 and a seven and a half chance or seven and a half percent chance of fire. For torpedoes, you have 550 millimeter Lance torpedoes. Uh, you get four of those, one, uh, a double launcher on either side of the ship. They reload 60 seconds. They have a uh, maximum damage of 14,833. Uh, you have a 1.3 kilometer torpedo detectability by sea, uh, and then of course nine kilometer torpedo range with a 60 knot top speed. AA, you have 20 millimeter 70 caliber Mark IVs. You get 16 of those doing 58 damage per second, reaching out to two kilometers. You have 40 millimeter 56 caliber Bofors Mark IIs that you have 24 of doing 95 damage per second, reaching out to three and a half kilometers. And then you have the 90 millimeter 50 caliber MLE 1930s that you have eight of doing 15 damage per second and reaching out to four point or four kilometers. For maneuverability, you have 31 knots top speed, which is pretty freaking bad. Uh, turning circle radius is 650 meters, and a rudder shift time is 6.1 seconds with this build. Concealment, you have 11.8 kilometers by sea, uh, 7.4 by air, 2 is always guaranteed, and 6 kilometer smoke firing penalty. For armor, you have no armor in this thing. Keep that in mind. 16 millimeters everywhere. Okay, this thing literally gets just absolutely pummeled by pretty much everything. So keep that in mind. Uh, the other bad thing is you do have uh, a raised citadel and you get absolutely pounded if you go broadside. Unlike others that uh, the other French cruisers that we've talked to about or talked about up to this point, this does not suffer from getting overpinned. Okay, trust me, you will not get overpinned. If you go broadside, you will die. Period. Overview. Long reach, above average main battery range. Hit them before they can hit you. Beyond, uh, broad launch, wider maximum spread of the torpedo launcher. And compromising. Higher caliber AP shells may overpin the armor, but may still arm. Don't, don't assume that they're going to overpin. They're going to arm. Uh, Laga. By the outbreak of World War II, Laga was one of the best light cruisers in the world. In contrast to her predecessor, she, was, she featured good main battery guns and the best armor protection among ships of this type. In 1943, cruisers of this class received enhanced anti-aircraft armament and surveillance radars. She entered service in 1936. There were six of them in the series. Let's take a look at her. Again, looks very familiar. I mean, it looks just like the previous couple of uh, ships that we've already talked about. It's pretty modern looking. Uh, a lot of the ship sticks out of the water, which is one of the biggest problems with this ship. Um, and it's just, it's, it is a glass cannon. Make no, make no mistake about it. Can it take some hits? Absolutely. But more often than not, you're going to be having a lot of fun and then you're dead. And that's about the gist of the French cruisers from here on out. So with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. 
Alrighty, so we're going to be on Fault Line, and we are in the Laga. Now, this is kind of like the perfect scenario in terms of, uh, you know, what you can hope for in these sort of cruisers. But uh, I'll be honest, man, I, I can't stand the, the high-tier French cruisers. I just, I don't like them at all. Uh, they can be good in very specific situations, but more often than not, you just, you end up getting dev struck anytime somebody looks at you with big guns. Like, it's just so freaking obnoxious. And it seems like every time somebody with big guns shoots at me, they get, like, the best dispersion on the planet, and they're all heat seekers. So no matter what I do, if I slow down, if I speed up, if I turn out, turn in, doesn't matter what I freaking do, they always find me and, and obliterate me with one shot. Like, it's freaking obnoxious. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get up in here. Like I said, this is kind of like the best case scenario that you could ever hope for in these cruisers because going up against other cruisers, no problem. But going against battleships and having to stay out at maximum range and, and kite and burn things down, I just hate that style of gameplay. Like, I can't stand it. Like, I hate kiting and, and burning things down. Um, cause I don't get the RNG that everybody else gets with a fire. Like, I'll, I'll set a guy on fire one time, he'll immediately damage Khan, and I won't set him on fire again for another five minutes. And then he just, he damaged Khan's again. Like, that's just my luck. I don't have the luck that everybody else gets with their freaking, um... Good lord, that's another set of sirens. What's going on tonight? I've heard more sirens in the last hour than I've heard in the last week. It's ridiculous. No idea what's going on, but it's getting kind of annoying. Anyway, uh, so right off the bat, we have an Omaha here. You can see I already loaded the AP. We're going to reach out and try to touch him. I think we catch him uh, a little bit here. Not much. And then he's going to kind of stop broadside on to us. And this shot here is going to kind of make him reconsider. Uh, because we end up getting our first two citadels on him. And he's like, okay, maybe this isn't what I want to do with my life. So we get another shot. He's able to go from reversing to forwards immediately. And all of our shots overpin him because of it. Uh, which is really unfortunate, but is what it is. Now, this Pensacola is right on top of me. And I'm not going to lie. Uh, he kind of catches me off guard because I, for whatever reason in my head, he was much further back than he is. So, uh, you can see I'm lining up a Torp Strike on this New York, which I'm assuming is coming through. And uh, just as we get the shot here, we're going to go ahead and place these torpedoes out here. And that's when I noticed that this guy is way too close. And, of course, he's angled just enough that we can't pin his bow. And luckily for us, he runs right into those torpedoes that we launched. So, gotta love that. And then we kind of beach at a... This is one of those islands that I can't stand. Like, I am so far away from the island, and yet I'm beached. It makes no sense. I wish Wargaming would fix that. At least make it make sense, you know what I mean? But, uh, we're gonna push out, try to catch this, uh, Omaha. Omaha, to his credit, decides to go bow into us, but it doesn't really matter. He doesn't have the armor to, uh, to take it. So we punch right through his bow. New York is coming towards us. He can't go left because he's got the island there. So he's got to turn to the right. So uh, we're going to get ready to drop torpedoes into him. And he is going to try to turn out. And I think he actually catches the island a little bit. Which may actually have saved me from being able to miss him completely with these torpedoes. But uh, we catch him with both. We cause the flood. Uh, you can see my freaking controller was messing up right there. I went to aim at a superstructure to get those pins on a superstructure, and just everything goes horribly wrong. Uh, and then, of course, I, I end up taking torpedoes from my teammate, but they managed to finish them off. Now, this lightning round has uh, gone pretty well so far. Took minimal damage, managed to get rid of two pretty good targets uh, in the Pensacola and the uh, oh, the freaking New York. So now we're going to go towards their base. We already have a destroyer in it. Their entire team is coming back to defend. So we need to make sure that we're in a position to take advantage of all these guys coming back to defend their cap. And you'll see us. I will actually split up from my team here a little bit. You can see I see Murmansk. Murmansk is the uh, Russian Omaha. So I'm, I'm expecting citadels every time I shoot at it. And uh, we don't actually get that on the first shot. Landed a little high, a little too far to the back. Uh, the second shot, though, looks pretty solid. Uh, adjust your aim a little bit, and uh, yeah, this time we're going to get literally nothing. He turned all the way out. He turned all the way out. Unfortunately. 
But again, we're going to split off from our other cruiser because I don't want them to be able to battle tank both of us or, you know, hide away from both of us. We've got this Koenig out here, so we go ahead and drop torps on him. And the problem is these torps take forever to get to the targets. Like, they are so slow. Um, but Koenig takes a shot at us and he gets like three shells right through the bow. And honestly, we're pretty lucky he didn't just kill us because... I'll be real honest, I thought he was going to citadel us and kill us right there. I've been dev struck more today than I have in the last two months. I swear. These French high tier cruisers are so obnoxious to play. I don't mind the low tiers because, you know, generally people don't know what they're doing and you can just absolutely obliterate people. But at higher tiers, man, these things are absolutely awful to play. Just due to the fact that they are so easy to kill. They're just easy to kill. And it doesn't matter if you're in a cruiser, in a battleship, whatever. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you will just wreck these things uh but we have the krasny out here broadside on so we're gonna go ahead and switch over to him we've switched to the ap because we know that the uh the conic is gonna die and that's when this furry taco comes around the corner we uh lead him a little too far on the first shot right across the bow just a little warning shot to him let him know that we're we're looking at him and uh this one's gonna hurt that that was very accurate and we get one citadel, but uh, quite a few penetrations. And uh, we're going to just, as we get closer, the worse this is going to get for him. As we get another citadel on him. And uh, with one more good shot here, he should be toast. So we get another shot out. We start looking at the mermans. Because that guy's dead. And uh, we get two citadels, of course, on the last salvo. But mermansk is starting to go forward. We, can, we see this. And look at that dispersion. My god. And just wreck that man with three citadels, five penetrations. Just absolutely smash that man. Uh, we managed to dodge his torpedoes. We're taking a lot of a lot of flack here, but uh, unfortunately for us, uh, you know, it, it, fortunately for us, we're angled relatively well to both of these guys. So they're not going to get a whole lot out of it. We do manage to take down the mermans, and that leaves this Krispy Kreme over here, who is just absolutely begging for it. So we're going to reach out, and touch him as well. Uh, first shot, get a few penetrations, but uh, usually takes me two shots before I get that absolute god-tier shot. Uh, but in this case, he turns away uh, to dodge the torpedoes. He does a really good job of dodging, but unfortunately for him, that leaves him wide open to be touched. But of course, in true Spartan fashion, we leave him with just enough for somebody else to kill. So we miss out on the Kraken by that much. Literally, guy had no hit points left, but 2,271 base XP, top of the leaderboard, four kills, 104,000 damage done. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.